In Java, things work a little bit differently. What you need to do is to download the Oracle Universal Connection Pool Library, and it is this library that provides the connection pooling functionality to use. There are some other open source examples out there, but in this module, I'm just going to cover the use of the Universal Connection Pool Library. This is a separate download from Oracle, and you can use the link provided on this slide, or simply go to Oracle's website and look in the Downloads section, and then look under Developer Tools. I've also provided a link to the Java doc for this library, so if there are other aspects of the library you are interested in, you can review the documentation provided by Oracle. What you're going to do is have some sort of method that is responsible for initializing the connection pool, probably called in an initialization routine of your application. In this case, I'm handing the name of the connection pool, the JDBC URL, the database username and password that will be used by the connection pool into this helper method. The pool name is not actually used in making the connection, it's just nice to have so that when you have multiple pools, you have some sort of friendly identifier that can be used to tell what pool is what. We use a pool data source factory object to create a new pool data source object, and then on that pool data source object, we set all of the appropriate parameters so that the pool data source will know how to connect to Oracle. And this includes the name of a class that will act as a factory class for creating connections. Down below here, we then have an opportunity to set some of the parameters for our pool. So you can see I've decided to set an initial pool size of 5, a minimum size of 1, and a max of 100. And then this method is returning a pool data source object. Now what is important is that in your application, you need to keep a reference to this pool data source object, so your data access code can get a reference to this object, because we'll use this pool data source in order to get connections to the Oracle server, as we'll see in the next slide. Here we see a segment of some data access code that needs to get a connection to the database, and there are two important lines in this segment. The first of these is the second line in the code fragment. And the idea here is that in some way we're getting a reference to the pool data source object that we created in the previous slide. In this slide, I'm showing this as calling a method that would probably be doing some sort of lookup by the name of the pool. But there are other ways you could do this. Just in some way, you have to get the reference to that pool data source object. And then, on the pool data source object, we're going to call getConnection. And this is going to get a connection from the connection pool for us. Just like in the .NET code, this may require opening a new physical connection to the database, but if so, this is all done behind the scenes. In most cases, the pool data source is going to return us a connection that is already in the pool, just not being used, and then we're going to perform our data access as normal. When finished, we call close on the connection, and just like before, this doesn't actually close the physical connection, but it returns the connection to the pool. So we can see, it's very easy to use a connection pool in Java just like it is in .NET, and there really is no reason not to use one when making connections from your application code.